sharing with you today um, the topic that is very important for all of us. It is gallbladder cancer. We'll be talking about the treatment and outcomes of the uh, uh, gallbladder cancer uh, disease. Gallbladder cancer treatment and outcomes. Gallbladder cancer is the sixth most common cancer worldwide. Uh, it is approximately 140,000 new cases per year, which result in 100,000 deaths per year. A uh, complete surgical resection is the only hopeful cure for this uh, disease. Unfortunately, only a third of patients are eligible for uh, surgical resection to try to obtain cure. Uh, there are several key factors that determining uh, long-term survival of gallbladder cancer outcome. The first and the most important factors is a tumor stage. We call it TNM staging. At the time of presentation, T stands for uh, tumor size and stands for uh, nodes, lymph node status and M stands for metastasis, whether the patient have a tumor spread um, outside the gallbladder area or not at the time of presentation. The second important factor is, is the tumor biology to see how aggressive or how malignant the gallbladder cancer is. There are two types of uh, methods of presentation for gallbladder cancer. The first is um, a known mass in the gallbladder. This is called primary gallbladder cancer, it means uh, by the time of the, the diagnosis, the CT scan show a tumor in the gallbladder. The second way of presentation is called incidental findings of mass on the gallbladder specimen. It means somebody had a cholecystectomy for, for example, a benign a gallbladder problem, acute cholecystitis. And then uh, unexpectedly on the final pathology report, the patient was found to have a tumor in the gallbladder and that tumor uh, was uh, proven to be uh, gallbladder cancer. There are several uh, symptoms that can uh, occur in patients with primary gallbladder cancer. Uh, the first is abdominal pain. Usually it occurs in the right upper quadrant, close to the uh, rib cage on the right side. Second is uh, bloating. Uh, third is uh, uninten in unintentional weight loss. Uh, fourth is jaundice. And I highlighted the jaundice because uh, patient with jaundice um, are usually presented with more advanced uh, disease and the prognosis is usually much uh, worse um, when they're proven to have gallbladder cancer. The most current staging of gallbladder cancer is by AGCC8 addition. Um, if we start with the T stage, um, the earliest cancer in the gallbladder is called carcinoma in situ, TIS. And then uh, T1, T2, T3, and T4. T4 is the um, uh, gallbladder cancer with invasion of the main pole vein and hepatic artery or two other organs outside the region. Uh, obviously, T4 is a lot more advanced than T1 or T2 or T3. If we talk about the end staging, uh, N0 means no uh, lymph node uh, metastasis found. N1 means one to three uh, lymph node metastasis, and N2 means uh, four or more lymph node metastasis. M0 means no uh, tumor spread outside the gallbladder, and M1 means there are tumor spread outside the gallbladder. It can be in the liver, stomach, lung, brain, bone, and etc. This is the first uh, graphic here. Uh, gallbladder cancer uh, survival um, is different by the depth of the uh, gallbladder cancer. Uh, obviously, T1, which is the earliest type of um, gallbladder cancer, has the best survival. As you can see, my cursor here, T1 has the best survival, followed by T2, followed by T3, followed by T4. T4 is the most advanced uh, stage. The overall survival is, is obviously not as good as T1 or the earlier stage. If we look at the uh, gallbladder survival uh, in a different angle, this is by stage. Um, we can see stage one is stage one is here, stage two, stage three, stage four. So um, again, common sense, stage four is worse than stage one. Uh, this is the same as this um, uh, graphic on the right side. This is just uh, the difference between agency seven edition and eight edition. We are using this eight edition now. What is the preoperative workup for gallbladder cancer? 
the first and the foremost is just like any cancer uh, um, operation. Uh, a surgeon needs to assess how strong the patient is performing on the clinical aspect. It is called assessment of performance status. Once we say, okay, the patient is strong enough to undergo a major operation, we move on to the uh, imaging uh, part of the um, uh, workup, which is a high quality triple phase CT scan. And uh, we include the chest as well to make sure there's no tumor in the, in the lungs. So the CT scan include chest, abdomen, and pelvis. The second is MRI or MRCP. If there is an indication of involvement of the vessel or the biliary tract um, carrying uh, bile out of the liver. Patient with jaundice uh, uh, must have an MRI to see the extent of um, uh, tumor invasion into the biliary system. Uh, PET scan is used not very routinely because it's only uh, find a, a tumor that otherwise not found on a CT scan in a, about three to five percent of patients only. Um, biopsy um, is done if we suspect there is a tumor outside the gobbler area. Um, diagnostic laparoscopy means a surgeon place a small uh, camera through a small incision in the operating room uh, to look at the abdominal cavity uh, just before uh, doing the gobbler operation, gobbler cancer operation, to make sure there's no evidence of a tumor spread within the abdominal cavity that cannot be seen on the CT scan preoperatively. An important um, uh, point I want to highlight here is a preoperative tissue uh, biopsy is not needed. So if there's any tumor uh, seen in the gobbler wall, doing a biopsy of that tumor is not indicated. And in fact, it's contraindicated. Why is contraindicated? Because there's a possibility that a percutaneous biopsy will cause a spillage of bile, which increases the chance of patient to have carcinomatosis. It means tumor spread within the abdominal cavity. These patients are unresectable. This is a schematic picture of the gallbladder cancer. You can see a solid mass uh, attached to the gallbladder wall. And this is how the metastasis looks like. It means the um, um, liver has a tumor nodule that originates from the gallbladder. Uh, unfortunately, this patient with uh, metastasis like this, uh, they cannot undergo a curative resection of the gallbladder cancer. They're considered uh, unresectable at this point. Uh, we're going to start with incidental gallbladder cancer. <clears throat> About 50 to 70 percent of gallbladder cancer are actually found incidentally. If it's known in the OR by the general surgeon, a referral to an, a hepatobiliary surgeon uh, should be initiated at the time of a diagnosis. Um, as mentioned before, biopsy may lead to uh, a tumor spread called carcinomatosis, therefore it's not indicated. Uh, intraoperative findings um, during the first operation is important to describe uh, clearly and communicate it to the uh, uh, liver surgeon, uh, whether the gallbladder was um, uh, leaking, there's a spillage of bile, there's a preference with gallbladder, uh, those kind of factors are important to uh, see at the next step in management and also important to uh, predict the overall survival for the patient. These slides uh, should be sent to the uh, hepatobiliary pathologist and uh, uh, tumor depth uh, dictates uh, what's need uh, next. Uh, T1 uh, cancer, which means the cancer only limited to the mucosa, the cholecystectomy is adequate. It means there's no need for further liver operation. However, patient with T1B to T3 uh, which is about three-quarter of a patient, uh, surgical re-resection is indicated with lymphadenectomy. It means the patient needs to undergo further operation in the form of liver resection um, in the area of surgical uh, bed, which is segment four and segment five of the liver. In addition to the lymphadenectomy at the same time, it means removing the lymph nodes that drains the uh, area of the gallbladder cancer. The operation has two components, like I mentioned. The first is portal lymphadenectomy, removing uh, the N1 lymph nodes. And the second part of the operation is removing part of segment four and segment five of the liver. Um, there is an um, um, entity called N2 nodal involvement. It means the lymph nodes that are located behind the pancreas, between the aorta and vena cava, uh, between the celiac axis, 
between the superior mesenteric artery. Uh, these are what we call uh, nodal uh, disease outside the region of the gobbler cancer that can be cured. So when the patient has tumor uh, in the N2 uh, location, they are considered stage 4B, and the prognosis is similar to patient with uh, distant metastasis. And the overall survival also not very good. Uh, reportedly, uh, the average overall survival is about less than six months. So this kind of patients with N2 nodal involvement, they actually um, I should get uh, uh, chemotherapy uh, systemically instead of uh, surgery first. Uh, portal lymphadenectomy. This is a uh, procedure to clean up all the lymph nodes. As you can see the uh, 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 images here on the right side of the screen, the, the uh, uh, light uh, uh, green or blue area. This is called N1 uh, lymph node region. These are called N1 lymph nodes. These are the lymph nodes that are supposed to be removed during the gallbladder cancer operation. However, if you look at the black dots here, this is called N2 uh, lymph nodes. These are the lymph nodes that um, um, if found to have cancer, they are too far gone. This is, called, this is uh, considered to be um, uh, similar to distant metastasis, and they're supposed to be treated with systemic chemotherapy first. During the operation, we also um, um, uh, mandated to check the cystic duct margin. This is where the uh, gallbladder was detect, de detached from the uh, remaining uh, biliary tree. We um, send the patient, they send the uh, specimen for a frozen section uh, intraoperatively to see whether there's any tumor this is called um, cystic margin to see if there's any tumor right here where the cystic duct was disconnected from the remaining of the biliary tree. If there are tumor uh, found in the cystic duct margin, the patient need to have the entire extrahepatic bile duct removed from here to here. So this required a more extensive operation with the biliary reconstruction. The goal of lymphadenectomy is to obtain at least six lymph nodes to be adequate for staging and for treatment purposes. You can see here, and again, and uh, one lymph node, the global cancer uh, starts here. The tumor flows through the uh, lymphatic vessels to the cystic duct lymph nodes right here. They go down to the uh, pericolodocal cyst around the common bile duct and down to the area behind the pancreas and the duodenum. And you can see here, this is the progression of a cancer trying to get into the major vessel, which is the aorta and cava. This is the venous drainage of the gallbladder. Um, the gallbladder cancer can also flow through the venous drainage um, around the gallbladder. As you can see here, there's a lot of venous plexuses around the uh, bile ducts. Those tumor cells, they can flow down into these small capillary channels and try to escape from the region of the uh, primary gallbladder cancer. So therefore, it's, it's, it's quite important to clean up all of this lymphatic as well as venous plexus during the gallbladder cancer operation. Now, we move on to the second part, which is the liver resection. What entails in the liver resection? It is a non-anatomical resection of part of segment four and segment five. This is where the liver was attached to with, um, before the gallbladder cancer um, uh, operation. This is the area where the uh, tumor uh, will invade the liver um, if one is diagnosed. Uh, sometimes the uh, tumor invasion to the liver is quite um, uh, significant and the patient end up uh, needing a formal uh, right hepatectomy. It means the entire right side of the liver needs to be removed and blocked with the gallbladder cancer. And um, this is obviously a more major operation, however doable and should be done in the patient with isolated global cancer without any evidence of distant metastasis period. Um, it is very important for the uh, uh, surgeon, for the liver surgeons to really understand uh, how the liver uh, anatomy uh, is. It is very important to see uh, the relation between the gallbladder and the liver and the uh, 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 vessel that feeds the liver and the gallbladder um, 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 relation 
to the uh, stomach and duodenum um, in order to um, uh, produce a good oncologic outcome of the operation. This is again a, a picture of the um, anatomy of uh, blood vessels that bring blood to the liver. Now, um, there are several ways of uh, performing gallbladder cancer resection. The first is the traditional open operation where the patient uh, require an open midline um, incision with extension to the right. Um, the second uh, method of doing gallbladder cancer resection is through a minimally invasive approach. This is the uh, most modern, the better way of doing this operation. If technically feasible, it can be done uh, laparoscopically or robotically. Uh, why minimally invasive surgery is better? The reason why is because there have been many publications that have compared uh, the outcome of minimally invasive versus open operation for liver resection. And this is similar to the gallbladder cancer operation because it involves liver resection also. It is known that a minimally invasive operation has less blood loss. Therefore, the patient required less blood transfusion. They can resume oral intake within the same day of the operation. If they have gallbladder cancer operation in the morning, by around two or three o'clock, they can drink liquid. Um, the patient required less pain medication, a shorter length of stay. Most patients stay in the hospital for only about two to, two to three days compared to five to seven days with open operation. Um, there is less wound complications because the incisions are, are small, less infection, less uh, hernia formation, less uh, the hissens. The hissen means the incision um, are split open. Um, obviously, better cosmesis with small incision with comparable or maybe better oncologic outcomes. As I mentioned earlier, each patient that has um, a gallbladder cancer operation, they have uh, intraoperative force section. So we um, actually uh, bring the specimen to the pathology uh, uh, room to um, uh, put them under um, a process called frozen section. They get freezed uh, with ice and the specimen were uh, uh, looked at uh, under microscope uh, quickly. Uh, it takes about 10 to uh, 15 minutes um, when the patient is still on the table to see whether the oncologic outcome of the operation has been met or uh, whether the patient needs a more extensive operation. What if the gallbladder cancer involves the surrounding organs? Um, local resection of the colon, which is a large bowel or duodenum or sm small bowel is considered appropriate if this is the only organ that's involved in the gallbladder cancer. Um, resection of the artery pole vein or uh, doing a whipple operation uh, for gallbladder cancer is considered a high morbidity and mortality procedures uh, with questionable benefit. Therefore, um, uh, this tend to be uh, reserved um, for a, a, a small amount of patients who have undergone uh, preoperative uh, systemic chemotherapy. Um, for patients who are uh, locally advanced and undersectable, uh, they should be treated with uh, uh, systemic chemotherapy. The standard regimen is gemcitabine and cisplatin in the United States. And if they respond uh, well to chemotherapy, they can be considered again for surgical resection. Um, how about removing the common bowel ducts? Um, there are arguments for it, there are arguments against it. The argument for removing the bowel duct in addition to removing the gallbladder is it increased the um, uh, yield of the lymphatic uh, resection. However, the arguments against it, uh, it does not increase survival. However, it adds uh, complications to the operation, as, especially with the um, uh, biliary reconstruction that needs to be done. Some patients develop uh, biliary strictures that can be uh, difficult to manage later on. So um, the recommendation is um, we only perform a common bowel resection if the patient either has a locally advanced uh, uh, case or if the cystic duct stem is positive for cancer. Otherwise, um, common bowel resection is not originally done. Um, for patient who was found to have an in incidental findings of the gallbladder after a laparoscopic cystectomy for um, um, a gallbladder infection, for example, uh, used to be um, the standard of practice was to uh, remove uh, um, full thickness of those port sites. 
However, uh, now we don't adopt the practice of routinely um, um, resect the uh, uh, port sites because uh, even if the patient has a tumor at the port site, it's, it is an indicator that the patient is about to have uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis and not simply a local recurrence. Therefore, a routine port site excision, which is quite morbid operation, um, actually not routinely recommended. I want to share with you um, uh, several important papers on the gallbladder cancer um, uh, treatment. This is the ex expert consensus statement published in the Journal of Hepatobiliary Surgery in 2018. Uh, the gallbladder polyps that is more than a centimeter in size or if they have a vascular stocks, uh, this patient should have cholecystectomy done. Um, in about 23% of patients who was um, taken to the operating room for a staging laparoscopy, and I mentioned before, uh, creating a small incision, place a camera into the abdomen to look inside. In about 20% of, 23% of patients was actually found to have a tumor spread outside the liver or outside the gallbladder. These patients um, uh, should be uh, treated with systemic chemotherapy and not surgery. Um, uh, six uh, lymph nodes is minimum uh, for lymphadenectomy in order to um, uh, adequately stage this tumor. Um, Resection, it means uh, further uh, surgery is uh, needed for a patient with T1B, T2, and T3 of uh, gallbladder cancers. T1A is uh, adequate with cholecystectomy only. And patient uh, who was found to have R1 or R2 margins after the liver resection should be treated with adjuvant chemo radiation treatment. It means patient who was taken to the operating room for um, more surgery um, and still um, have tumor, uh, residual tumor left behind, uh, could not be resected anymore, um, the patient should um, achieve, should uh, receive adjuvant chemo radiation treatment. This is the second important papers of re-resection of incidental gallbladder cancer from Europe. Um, it is about 35% of patients who was found to have cancer in the gallbladder incidentally when they um, undergo re-resection, uh, about 35% of patients, they actually have more tumor in the gallbladder bed. This is the patient that received um, uh, segment four and segment, uh, segment four and segment five liver section and uh, have their tumor uh, uh, cleared all the way. Without uh, re-resection, re the survival is only 13 months. However, with re-resection, the survival um, uh, improved to 52 months. So clearly, patients um, should undergo re-resection whenever they are um, um, uh, uh, classified as uh, T1, B, T2, and T3. Um, this is the uh, paragraph of the uh, paper. As you can see here, the uh, uh, survival of patient who underwent re-resection is much better than the patient who did not under undergo re-resection. And this is the similar uh, graph here in more detail. This is the patient. Uh, this is patient T2 with re-resection. This is T2 without re-resection. This is T3 with resection. And this is T3 without resection. So clearly, uh, when the patient uh, is scanned for re-resection, they should um, um, be referred for it. Uh, this is the patient who have residual uh, disease after the re-resection. Uh, when, when the complete re-resection can be done without residual disease, they are in the first line here. And when they are um, found to have residual disease after the resection, they follow the lower line here, which is uh, war survival. Um, this is the last paper that I want to share with you. This is the minimal invasive surgery for global cancer. Uh, at this point, um, there is a um, um, lack of uh, prospective randomized data. Um, uh, what we know for sure is the patient with a large bulky tumor with invasion of the colon duodenum, patient who are jaundice or yellow, patient that has um, an involvement of the vessels feeding the liver. Um, they, they should not be done uh, minimally invasively. They should be done open uh, after um, uh, appropriate uh, uh, preparation. Uh, bile spillage must be avoided at all time to uh, decrease chance of carcinomatosis. Um, the key step of the operation, minimal invasive and open, are the same. 
These are several papers that um, um, describe the early experience of laparoscopic uh, goblet cancer outcomes. So in conclusion, um, a patient who was found to have a solid mass in the gallbladder on the preoperative CT scan or ultrasound, they should be uh, evaluated by a liver surgeon. A uh, patient who have a cholecystectomy laparoscopically uh, for a um, uh, benign, presumably benign disease and was found to have cancer in the final rep report, they should also be um, uh, evaluated by a liver surgeon to determine uh, what uh, else needs to be done for them to make sure they uh, obtain the uh, uh, complete treatment and um, uh, try to get the best outcome of oncologic um, um, uh, care as possible. Um, I would stop here and this is um, the end of my um, talk. Thank you.